The Navajo Nation says while other states start to open up, they're going to be hunkering down. The latest DIY, Danielle, not the most glamorous project, but this is important. I'm Danielle Tedesco. Your time now, 5 a.m. We're still social distancing here in the studio, but we still have the big four to get you out the door. After a few epic fails, I finally got it done. Watch. Tattoo shops giving away their masks and gloves to the healthcare workers. Bakeries helping high school seniors celebrate graduation. And now salons are getting involved. We're bringing the experts in. And now we've got Dr. Darren Schaefer, the executive medical director from Presbyterian Hospital here with us. Eddie Garcia and I still social distancing. I miss you, Ed. <laughs> you too. We're probably in spring cleaning mode. I know I am, but we shouldn't go to the stores for those supplies. So here are my top three gadgets to get online. The pandemic is forcing all of us to make some pretty big changes in our lives. Workers at Albuquerque Substance Abuse Rehab Center say they've had to change the way they treat patients. If you are interested in becoming a foster parent and taking on that challenging but so rewarding job, we're going to link up the information for you on our website, KOB.com. Not the update we were hoping for from the governor, but we can look forward to more restrictions in our state. Try to keep people uh asleep at home is that what we're doing yeah they're upstairs and Got i it. tucked blankets <laughs> at their doors to like muffle it wow. i also make sure the heater's on every time yeah. i have a hit so that it gives some white noise yeah <laughs> all right watch what happened when i brought it in oh no <laughs> no <laughs> learn from me okay don't do this this was a bad idea. This is the spot at the heart of our city and at the heart of this battle. We're on Albuquerque's west side. We're right off of course, but it feels like we've left the city. I'm surrounded by nature. Dryer vent time. He's it's excited. Gotta I'm it's excited. Gotta it's gonna be done. Winter storm causing some problems all over New Mexico this morning, including slide offs and crashes on our state's highways. More than 200 closures and delays also in effect now. That includes Albuquerque Public Schools, Rio Rancho Public Schools on a two hour delay. But all of Santa Fe Public Schools closed today. You can find the full list of the closures scrolling at the bottom of your screen. They're also at KOB.com. We've got live team coverage for you this morning to help you navigate this. So we've got Casey Torres out on the roads. Steve Stucker is going to give us the forecast in just a minute. Silence. We're not ready for you yet, sir. We're going to talk to Casey Torres. She's on the highway. You're on I-25 right now. Isn't this just horrendous? That woman trying to impersonate a seagull. She did a pretty good job, if that's what you're into. She's taking part in this seagull cry contest that's in France. The festival happens every year on Mardi Gras. <laughs> Can you imagine dating one of these people? I have to wow, practice. Wow. But I've been, it's it's shrieking time. Get outside, yeah. So our Are producer Grace it? wanted us to do a little. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not going to suggest. I, could, I, I think the that. best I can do is like pigeon. You know, <laughs> and I was I was thinking of the crow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, cool. Success. Wow. I'm Danielle Tedesco. It is 4:30 right now, and let's get to a look at the big four. Yeah, first though, we're sending it over to Steve Stecker at home with a check on the forecast. Steve. Getting a look outside I-25 at Montgomery, north and southbound traffic doing just fine. Let's give you a look at I-40 and Fourth Street, all clear. Crew heading to the fire right now. Yeah, we're going to continue to bring you updates on the Ojo de los Casos fire throughout the morning on air and online. So stick with us for that. But crews say that fire is partially burning in the same spot as the 2016 dog head fire. And back then, it was a machine performing a routine procedure to thin the forest that started what became a nearly 18,000 acre fire. 12 homes were destroyed, along with dozens of other structures. Crews say the southern part of the Ojo de los Casos fire is what's on the dog head burn scar right now. And the Wood Springs 2 fire on the Navajo Nation is now 83% contained. It started late June from lightning and has burned nearly 13,000 acres. Fire crews say that lower humidity and more winds could impact the firefights, but that this fire should be fully contained by next Friday. In the Gila National Forest, crews say the Cub Fire is only 5% contained, and that one has burned more than 11,500 acres. Started about two weeks ago from lightning. Fire crews say they are working to tackle it, but also a warning for New Mexicans about smoke pooling in the canyons and drainages overnight. 
This morning, we're getting our first look at the man accused of a shooting at Los Altos Skate Park that hurt a seven-year-old boy. APD arrested 28-year-old Mario Garcia last night. He's facing charges of shooting at or from a vehicle, aggravated battery with a deadly weapon, and child abuse. And police say that little boy was shot in the head, but get this, he is expected to be okay. But APD officers say they believe the bullet was not meant for that child. This all happened yesterday afternoon, again at Los Altos Skate Park, that's near Lomas and Eubank. According to investigators, witnesses say this started when a skateboarder noticed a woman going through his backpack, and that's what started a confrontation. In front of the woman, she threatened to go get her boyfriend from nearby, which she did. He showed up with some type of weapon. Witnesses say Garcia left and then fired a gun from his car. APD says the mobile unit was recording and was able to catch a description of the car and of Garcia. He is still in jail this morning. All happening today in the coronavirus outbreak in our state, we're expecting another update from Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham. She's also said to talk about the public health order, and in her last update, she put reopening plans on hold for our state. Today's update is this afternoon at 4. You can watch live on KOB.com. Bernalillo County also had the highest amount of new cases at 99. The governor says this was the state's second highest day ever for new cases. And she said we cannot afford to get complacent. And today there was supposed to be a county commission meeting in Otero County, but that has been postponed. And that's after Commissioner Coy Griffin traveled to South Dakota over the weekend. Under the current health order, anyone coming in from out of state has to quarantine from two weeks. Griffin posted on his Cowboys for Trump page saying that he will not quarantine or wear a face covering. Governor, I want you to know, July 9th in Otero County, I am going to be in the meeting, and if that includes whatever you have to do, then we'll just see how big you can flex, I guess, because the mandates are stupid. Wow. So Griffin says, as you heard, the meeting is on, but officially it has been postponed to July 23rd. State health officials say there are currently 65 coronavirus cases and seven deaths in Otero County. That's out of nearly 6,000 tests done there. 437 Thursday morning and some construction happening on the road set to start every morning at 6. This is for a roundabout at 12th and Manal, and this will include lane and sidewalk closures at least through August 30th. Still ahead, the debate to reopen schools. A lot of New Mexico parents are on the fence. Coming up, we'll show you the results of our own KOB4 Facebook poll. Plus, colleges are still figuring out what to do about the new rule for international students taking online courses. And now two schools are going to court over that. Details when we come back. All right, 602 and new this morning, the latest DIY Danielle. Not the most glamorous project, but this is important. Fire safety in your home because you can put all the pretty things you want inside and none of it's going to matter if it goes up in smoke. <laughs> David Myers Good morning. with the Albuquerque Fire Marshal's office. Now, he's not going to come install your smoke detectors, but he's helping me today. And we have a lot to tackle, starting with that most basic project of putting up a smoke detector. Placement is, is key. We want it in every common area, so as close to the ceiling as possible. Here we so, go. So, Are you ready? Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> You're alarmed. <laughs> he's like, oh, you got excited really quick. OK, here we go. No, first I'm marking. Marking the spot to install a battery powered smoke detector because the ones that are hardwired to your home need to be installed by a licensed electrician. And this was easy. Couldn't find my safety goggles. That's okay. But this is important. Yes. Okay. Safety first. Good. All right, here we go. So you got to look cool. <laughs> Screw on the smoke detector bracket, pop in the battery. And so now we want to test it. Okay. So we just push this test button. Just hit the test button. If the light is flashing, that means it's in normal operational mode. Then just click it onto the bracket. Really? There you go. That we're done? Yeah, we're, we're done. High five. All Good right. job. We did it.
too easy. On to the next challenge, trying out an escape ladder for two-story homes. Meyer says this is a must. So I picked this thing up for about 39 bucks on Amazon. <laughs> At first, it didn't fit on my windowsill. So you're dead. <laughs> Just Yikes. But this shows the importance of testing out your escape plan before an emergency. Then, as we prepared to show you that it wasn't going to work, Myers found a way. Manhandled it. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Yay! Oh, please tell me you got that on camera. Yeah. <laughs> now we know that's what it's going to take. Should I try to go down? Yes. <laughs> okay. It's have, raining out there, We have to know that it works, okay, right? Okay, all right. Go down. Okay. Say a prayer. You have an emergency? How are you going to get out? <laughs> Quickly, I hope. <laughs> we did it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, back inside for the last project. Dryer vent time. He's it's excited. Be done. I'm it's excited. Gotta it's gonna be done. Myers recommends cleaning your dryer vents at least once a year. You can pay a pro to do this for you and spend about a hundred bucks, or you can DIY it. Just stand there. Don't no, worry about it. Let's do it yourself. <laughs> First, disconnect the duct from the wall. Oh man, look how dirty that is. Yep. <gasps> Yuck. You can find a dryer vent cleaner at most home improvement stores. I got this kit on Amazon for 30 bucks. The lint eater. Have you done this before? So this is a fancy schmancy one. Okay. This one hooks up to your drill. But there are some that you can just, it's like a little, a, a big pipe cleaner. Okay. That does the same thing. Yeah, this has extensions. Look at that. So depending on how far back it goes. Attach the drill bit it comes with to one of those plastic extension rods. Attach and secure the pipe cleaner and then put it into your drill. Huh? Yeah. <gasps> That's so neat. Push it into the duct slowly. Yeah, we're going to send it to your neighbors. <laughs> And pull it out periodically. That's so gross. Huh? Look at all that. So that could have started a fire. Yeah. These do get really hot. We cleaned the tubing as well. Oh, that's so satisfying. I love that. I loved that probably more than I should. Then just reattach the duct to the wall, and that's it. And so a very special thanks to David Myers and Albuquerque Fire Rescue. David made things so much less intimidating yeah. to get it done. He also was the muscle for me a lot in a lot of things. And I'll link up all the products I used on this story, KOB.com. I think I'm going to ask You're going to borrow, borrow the, the lint eater? Yes, yeah. please. <laughs> and that, uh, that rope thing, the Oh, the no, stairs? that's staying in my house. No, that would be like a cool thing that. to play with. <laughs> no, it is not. It says on the thing, not, not a, toy. a toy. Okay. Don't play with it. Our Danielle Tedesco continues our four investigates team reports that look at issues impacting New Mexico's natural resources. And in this story, Danielle takes a deep dive into a heated property battle right on Albuquerque's west side. This is the spot at the heart of our city and at the heart of this battle. We're on Albuquerque's west side. We're right off of Coors, but it feels like we've left the city. I'm surrounded by nature. If a proposal goes through, there will be homes built right where I'm standing. And people from all over the state have now made it their mission to keep that from happening. On a summer Saturday evening, right before sunset, the parking lot at the end of Namaste started filling up. Car after car arriving to speak to us about what they love in that area and their fears for its future. Wow, I didn't even know we had this. Dr. Susan Chaudois says that's almost everyone's reaction when they see this property for the very first time. A quiet spot in nature, right in the middle of a bustling city. The bend in the Rio Grande forms the San Antonio Oxbow, a habitat for migrating birds and other wildlife native to New Mexico. Susan asked people to meet with us if they wanted to speak out, and more than 100 people showed up. 
This space doesn't belong to the Oxbow, it doesn't belong to Andalusia or the West Bluff. This belongs to the entire city of Albuquerque, and that's why we are here today. Here's the proposal from the developer with Abrazo Homes. 76 houses on 23 acres of land. That land was owned for more than 50 years by singer and philanthropist Suzanne Poole. She and her husband bought the property in the 1950s. Yes, yes. She wanted people to take off their shoes, put their feet in the sand, and just take in the beauty of the wetland, the birds, a beautiful sunset. Susan says Mrs. Poole even named the street Namaste, protecting and preserving the land for anyone to come take in the nature. But her death in July 2012 put the future of this land in question. That land was sold to a developer, and now the fight over the land's development. In December 2018, the city's Environmental Planning Commission approved the developer's site plan. A land use hearing commission upheld that, even after hearing from several people against it. Those same people spoke to us at that spot in question. Some of them came from far away. Who lives in another part of the city? I live about the corner of Louisiana and Montgomery. I live by the airport. I live in Knob Hill. We don't live in the city. We're from Placitas, and we're just here to show how important this is to all the state. Should other people in our city who don't live in this immediate area care about this? Yeah. 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 You can't remove what God put here and think we can replace it. It's just stupid. If you want people to move to Albuquerque, you have to provide for the quality of life. Will you go to the next meeting? Yes. yes. And they did. Earlier this month, they packed the Albuquerque City Council chambers. Councilors listened for hours to the back and forth between the developer spokesperson and the appellants. Jim Strozier with Gamma Development says the city point blank said, this property was not open for public access. Early on in the process, we went to open space. We sat down with them and said, look, we know this is sensitive. It's important. Do you want it? Um, do you want us to dedicate it to the city? And they said, no. This is not an area of open space where the city wants access. This is very limited access in this area. They do not want people walking down into the Bosque in this area. They do not want people going down into the San Antonio Oxbow. Gamma Development and the city planning spokesman defended the approved site plan, pointing out that more than seven acres of the 23-acre spot will still be open space but it will only be accessible to people who live in that new development. Thank you for coming. In the end, a small victory for the people fighting against the proposed housing. The city council voted unanimously to send it back to the EPC for another review. I'm not anti-development, but this is just obscene. According to the site plan, the new homes will sit just 20 feet away from the wetlands. The homes already built in this area are 150 feet to 300 feet away from that edge. I tried talking to the developer directly through calls and emails. Nothing was ever returned. For Foreign Investigates, I'm Danielle Tedesco.